The animation starts with an introduction far beyond your imagination. Min, a teenage girl, plans to spend her birthday watching dramas, but her friends insist she celebrates it with them. The train breaks down on the Guadalupe Bridge, and a clan of Aswan comes out from nowhere to attack the girls. The animation switches the scene to show us Manila, a beautiful city overtaken by darkness. The treaty that has kept the humans safe from the supernatural underworld is starting to crack. There is no light to keep the shadows in check, but there is Alexandra trees, ordained to keep the darkness away. In the evening, the city gathers around a corpse, whom the police have identified as dead since 1995. Alexandra meets Guerrero, a captain of the police force who once worked with her father at the scene, where she tells them more about the corpse, Gina Santos, the white lady of the Belit Drive. She notices that a ritual sacrifice has taken place. Immediately, Gina leaps up and diminishes into ashes in the sky. This reminds Alexandra of her mother, Miranda, who taught her the rites and rituals of the Babylon. Alex bends down to pick some ashes, and this reminds Guerrero of her father, Anton, the former protector of the Accords. She opts to find the source of such strong magic, so she visits Nuno, her informant. On seeing a bribe, Nuno admits that the white lady got into a shady business with an Aswan clan, who promised her a share at their table. However, Alex learns that the ground mermaid bones from the ashes are from an Aswan clan that controls the pier. Fearlessly, Alexandra goes to remind Idwa, the chief of the Sapa clan, of the accords the tribe signed with her father. This annoys Idwa, so he asks his men to kill her. Edwa refuses to disclose who he sold the mermaid bones to, making Alex more determined. She goes ahead to pluck out his eye for obstructing her investigation, according to the accords. Just like her mother taught her, Alex utters some incantations as she stirs the eye in a glass of water with her sine, a weapon her father had given her. Captain Guerrero informs her that Mayor Santo Santa Maria got news about the case of the White Lady of Belit Drive and decided to get involved. Alex reveals the outcome of the ritual. Gina Santos was the mayor's mistress before she died, and he sacrificed her ghost to gain favor with the Aswan. She has a clue that the mayor intends to cover up the truth in the case rather than solve it. Guerrero warns that Mayor Santa Maria is more powerful than they think, but Alex confronts the mayor to know why he is aligning with the Aswan. He denies knowing anything about the mermaid bones in Edwa, asking her to bring proof to support her accusations. Captain Guerrero brings Alex to the blood-filled scene where the train had broken down on Guadalupe Bridge. Alex summons Santelmo to help uncover the truth of the accident. Upon chanting some incantations, she finally sees the souls, including a messenger of Ibu, the goddess of death. The messenger requests a favor to use the train to take the souls to the afterworld, and in turn, Alex asks that the death of the three girls be revealed to her. A butterfly leads her to the lair of the Aswan clan that attacked the girls. On getting there, Alex finds people locked up in cages on the orders of Xa Mole, a member of the council. She saves a little girl from death, and Xa Mole comes in with his men to kill her. Basilio and Crispin, Alex's boys, save the scene as they kill the remaining men Xa Mole sent. Rescuing the girl, Alex splits Xa Mole's body into two. Alongside Captain Guerrero, she discovers that Mayor Santa Maria is behind all of this. He wanted to build condos in the area, so he made a deal with the Aswang. Alex is hurt by this as she remembers how the Aswang killed her mother. At the diabolical, Idwu's messenger brings a peace offering for Alex while she undresses. The messenger mentions that the court of death would like to be in Alex's good graces when she becomes the ruler of the underworld, as prophesied. Alex barely believes that the prophecy refers to her. The animation takes us back to remembering how Anton and his daughter, Alex, find a clue to the deaths of Colonel Hidalgo's men in the Gogo Strip. They pay a visit to the colonel, who admits that Ramona is the culprit. He is sober for his actions of letting her possess their minds with a death ritual, leading to the death of his men and hers. A call disrupts Alex's thoughts, as Captain Guerrero brings her to another scene where a car crash happened. He informs her of the drag race the car was involved in and the disappearance of J.P. Lorca, the winner. He also introduces his nephew, Marco, who was a friend of the victim. Marco is from the Philippine 5th Infantry Division. Alex discovers hoof prints on top of the car and the lipstick of Corrine, J.P.'s girlfriend who is also missing. Basilio and Crispin bring two witnesses, Hannah and Ami, who are both wind people. They tell Alex about J.P.'s opponent, who is full of bestial energy. This opens Alex's inner mind to figure out that she needs to meet Senor's Armanas, the great stallion and lord of Tikbalang. Armanaz is happy to see Alex acting almost like her father. He agrees to resolve the issue of Malixi, his son, taking a human trophy, but he asks Alex to bring back Malixi who had gone missing for weeks.
Another case of multiple electrocutions brings Alex back to Livewell Village. Her meeting with Nuno brings her to understand that Bagan Lectro, a member of the council, is behind this magic. Alex dashes to meet Bagan Lectro, who she accuses of allowing sacrifices that involve leaving his son Sigil on dead bodies in Livewell Village. After Bagan denies knowing such, he warns Alex to stay away from his family and respect him as her father did. He brags that the balance Anton tried to maintain is at its end. Moreover, Alex needs to stop Malixi from running wild in the streets of Manila. She goes to the drag race venue, where she challenges him to a race, tempting him with the prize of a trophy. On realizing that Alex might win, Malixi transforms into a horse to overtake her. However, the wind people come to help Alex, and she gets to the finish line before Malixi. Although Malixi accuses her of cheating, he releases Corrine, playing free and fair. Meanwhile, Beige and Lectro has something planned and he evades the meeting with Alex. Just as Alex and the boys wonder what he might be up to, his son, Bagan Kalimlim, shows up, ready to kill Alex. Nuno's layman Lupa appears, helping Alex escape the disaster. He warns her to be careful while she goes after the Men of Darkness. Just as Basilio and Crispin realize that they are the prize for the Wind People, Beige and Lectro barges in from the roof, disrupting their breakfast. He warns Alex of the approaching storm, and since she killed his son and helped Armanas, she should expect nothing from him. But as usual, Alex is ready for whatever storm it is. However, Ramona is not remorseful as she kidnaps Hidalgo and brings him for a death sacrifice. She is ready to bring back her husband, Talibuso, through sacrifice. Her twin children partake in this act attacking the Sigbin, Anton's army, but as soon as their father returns in human flesh, he is ready to kill them all. As one case closes, another one opens. Alex is called by Captain Guerrero to see the corpse of Dr. Petra Galaga, a dermatologist whose body was found in the parking area of Magnamal. She finds the footprints of the culprit, which leads to the sewers and opening too small for a human to pass through. Summoning Jobert, Alex gets to see the CCTV footage from Magnamal, where the victim was killed. Jobert points out that Dr. Galaga was on a call with Nova Aurora, a popular actress before her demise. It excites Hank to hear about visiting his favorite actress, so much that he puts on a new suit and sprays cologne. Immediately they enter Nova Aurora's office to wait for her. Alex notices the presence of Amang Paso, an elder of the tribe of the Red Earth. But Aurora barges in, admitting that red eyes in the shadows are after her. It becomes chaotic that Alex, the boys, and Amang Paso leave to check what's happening. They leave Hank to look after Aurora. Hank becomes emotional when the actress talks about how disturbed she is. He steps out to bring more weapons to help Alex and the boys. But Alex gets shocking information from her informant Nuno. The creature attacking Aurora is a Tyanak, a feral globin that inhabits small corpses left in the wood. By the time Hank returns, Aurora is nowhere to be found. The Tyanak finds its way to attack Hank, but Aurora intervenes, leading them to a room. She knows what the creature wants, so she tells Hank to stay away. The Tyanak is Aurora's reanimated baby, whom she asked Petra to abandon in the woods. After patting the creature, she pulls out a knife and stabs the creature to death, with so much hatred that blood splatters cover her face. Alex shows Amang Paso a video of Aurora leaving her baby in the elements, all to save her career. She accuses him of being Aurora's accomplice, but Amang Paso defends himself, telling her that there are liars among her allies as well. Alex warns him not to do anything with the remains of the Tyanak, so she performs the rituals to bury it. Aurora is not free yet, more Tyanaks attack her at night, avenging their own. Alex remembers how her father managed to defeat the god of war, Talibuso, sending him to the underworld. She throws her anger at the punching bag, with a feeling that the underworld is about to break the accords. Hank points out that the consequences of breaking the accords are clear for them to see. But Alex doesn't feel so, she needs to back up the written accords with action. Captain Guerrero texts her about the missing bodies from the bearing in Magdalo Hall, and she shows up to unravel the case. Hank takes the first step to meet Nuno, to know more about what Amang Paso said. Nuno reveals that the tribes are on edge, and the Aswang tribe is stocking more muscle and magic. He warns Hank to stay on a low profile in the meantime. While Alex searches for a clue, Idwu's messenger appears again asking her to find the dead souls scheduled to board the afterworld train. However, Alex finds a summoning stone, which is used to raise the dead, but they must find the other two stones if they wish to break the spell. They move to the graveyard only to meet more walking corpses. After finding another stone, Alex and the boys enter the dragon gates to find out who is raising an army of corpses. The precinct is also overrun by corpses, Guerrero, and his men start evacuating.
Suddenly, the captain remembers a drunk prisoner in the cells. He hurries to rescue him, but a corpse attacks him. But Lieutenant Tapia comes to his rescue, saving him from death. This rescue doesn't last long as the prisoner refuses to evacuate with Guerrero. Luckily, Alex sends Santelmo to play, rescuing Tapia and Guerrero. Her lead spots that the prisoner has the remaining stones, but Guerrero wants the prisoner to be remembered and not dead. The stone is finally retrieved, and Alex's boys destroy it. While Hank makes peace with Amang Paso, a stranger, with a bomb tied around his chest, walks into the bar. The animation takes us back to see where Talad Gusto's twin boys, the Cilio and Crispin, take refuge in Anton's house. The council, which includes all heads of the different tribes, argues for casting Talad Busso's children. But Anton insists on keeping them as family and putting an end to them if they do anything rash. Meanwhile, Alex is not at peace as she thinks about what to do next. Malixi interrupts her moment with a message from his father and the council. The council will no longer honor the accords as human bombers have destroyed the tribe's places of power. They believe Mayor Santa Maria has declared humanity an enemy of the council. Alex argues that the tribes need to be united to defeat the bigger problem. Alex visits an injured Hank, whom she heals with her Sinek. Hank says everything he noticed about the bomber. It saddens him more when he mentions how a Mang Paso died while trying to put a barrier. They all know that Santa Maria is behind the bombings and someone more powerful is behind him. Using Jobert's help again, Alex and Guerrero discover that Santa Maria is using black magic to get the prisoners out of prison, just to attack the tribes. Unlike Alex, she doesn't feel ready. She remembers her trial at the Great Elite Tree and how she got stuck in there for five years. She returned to meet only Hank to welcome her back home without Anton. It hurt Alex to hear that her father died while protecting the lion at the tree. She was left with nothing but to assume the position of the new protector via courts. However, Alex visits the Bilibid prison where Santa Maria and the bombers are imprisoned. Marco now works at the prison, so he leads them to see General Villar, who is in charge. While Alex tries to convince the general to put an end to Santa Maria before he does something else, a prison break happens. It's the mayor and his new followers. The moment Alex proceeds to attack him, Nuno shows up as the mayor's familiar. He wants to avenge what Anton and the council objected to, burning the country and rebuilding it again. Malixi and the wind people appear right on time to support Alex. The layman Lupa supporting Nuno makes it harder for Alex and the boys to get through, so they plan to come from behind. While Numino and Santa Maria get cover, Alex flings in her last favor, Santelmo. It's all over, and Basilio offers to buy drinks to celebrate their victory. But Villar steps in to prove otherwise. He transforms into Talad Busso. Basilio and Crispin are not excited to see their father, so they support Alex in fighting against him. The traitor, Bagin Lectro, joins forces with Talad Busso to ruin the world. He is still angry at the death of his son, blaming Alex for everything. The boys with Guerrero kill Bacon Lectro, leaving Talad Busso to fight alone. But he proves that he is not alone, making his children turn their backs on Alex. The God of War reveals a more shocking truth. Anton knew about the sixth child's prophecy to pass judgment on the world, but he also hid the prophecy about the fifth child who was to conquer the world. Talad Busso reveals to Alex that Anton killed her twin sister and transformed into her Sinek. He forces Alex to embrace her fate so he can destroy the world and recreate a new cycle. Guerrero intervenes, begging Alex not to listen to Talabuso's manipulation. He argues that Anton is a good man, but the god of war kills him. This hurts Alex so much that she remembers her trial at the Belit Tree and how Anton made her trust herself to do anything. Converting this emotion to strength, she objects to Talabuso's manipulation and transforms the boys back to their normal selves. Alex drinks a portion of the dragon's blood and snatches her senag from the god of war. She takes him back to where he belongs in the underworld. Alex lands in front of the ballet tree, still hurt over the deaths of the one she calls family. Manila will forever be in trouble as a woman in all black attacks the city, searching for the tresses. Thank you for watching guys, if you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.